Hello, fictional. Welcome to the What If Issei. Today we are gonna see, What If Issei became the incarnation of lust and got harem. The short fic. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribe, so without further ado, let's get into the video. At first glance, Issei Haidu was the very definition of normal. Born from normal parents, living in a normal town, you would think that his life would be one of normalcy. Well you're wrong. Dead wrong. Issei Haidu life was never normal, even from the moment he was born. You see Issei Haidu was born with a sacred gear. And not just any sacred gear, he was born with the long Inus given to be the wielder of the boosted gear, a legendary long Inus, a sacred gear in a class of itself with twelve others, that in the right hands are capable of slaying gods. In another life he would have become the embodiment of lust, blissfully unaware of his sacred gear until he was murdered by a filthy crow and resurrected by a greedy she-devil. This however is not this life. It's amazing how small changes can make a huge difference on the world. Such as an event that happened when he was nine years old, a year after his childhood friend Irina left with her parents to England. Third person POV. Bored, bored nothing to do those were the thoughts of a young boy of the tender age of ten. I wish Irina was here he sighed deeply wanting for the hike his parents were on to end already. He turned his gaze to his parents saw that they were chatting with adults. Ugh. He groaned out in boredom this is never going to end. He took a second glance to where his parents were and thought they won't notice if I'm gone for a few minutes or so. I'ma go take a look around maybe I won't be so bored anymore. Quickly and quietly the boy snuck away from the camp where his parents were and decided to explore the forest in an attempt to alleviate his boredom. Too bad for him, he encountered a wolf that looked extremely hungry. He tried to run from the wolf, but little did he know that the wolf was toying with him, wanting to savor the kill. Issei ran and ran until he tripped, taking a nasty tumble that dislocated his right arm. He was too hooked up on fear and adrenaline to notice the pain. To make matters worse, he had ended up with his back against a stone wall with nowhere to run. The wolf decided that it was time to stop playing around and lunged for the kill. Time slowed down for Issei, as the jaws of Wolf got closer and closer to make a meal out of him. In a last act of defiance, he swung his left hand with all his might towards the wolf's snout. The thoughts running through his head during this moment ranged from I don't want to die. To I refuse to die like this. The both his and Wolf's shock, his left hand released a bright flash of light and was replaced with a red claw-shaped gauntlet with yellow accents and green inscriptions. Boost. A mysterious voice called out from his left hand. Explosion his left hand blurred and struck the wolf's snout dead on. The wolf was pushed back a long distance, and Issei, the youth fell on his butt. Did I do that? Were his last thoughts before he lost consciousness out from fatigue and shock from the near-death experience. Issei subconscious. Where I am? Said Issei in confusion finding himself surrounded by inky blackness in all directions. Well I suppose technically this is your mind, although it would be slightly more accurate to say your left hand within your mind and your consciousness projected into it replied a gruff female voice. Issei's eyes widened in recognition Issei bowed his head in thanks thank you for saving me, voice Nissan, if it wasn't for you, I would have been wolf food. The female voice chuckled in amusement there's no need for that. We are partners after all. Oh and please call me Drake. Uh miss, uh, I mean Drake can you show yourself or something it feels weird talking to you, but not seeing you asked Issei. Why not said Drake before the black void turned dark red before it ignited into flames. A figure rose up from the sea of flame, revealing a large red western dragon with eyes of emeralds. All in all the dragon looked majestic. Whoa, you look amazing. Said Issei with a gobsmacked expression. Your scales are pretty. Of course I am replied dry eyed gushing with pride. I am the red dragon empress. I'll have you know that before I was sealed I was one of the strongest beings in existence. After a while of Issei staring at Drake's ruby red scales, Drake spoke. There's some things we need to discuss. Said Drake seriously. What is it Drake? Asked Issei tilting his head to the side. I need to tell about the new world that you have stepped into said Drake. Drake spent the next half hour explaining everything about the supernatural world, such as the sacred gears, Long Inus, the three factions and the white one, so Issei would understand fully what kind of world he would soon be entering. And that sums it up Issei Dryag was interrupted by Issei. Can I can call you DD for short. Pretty please Issei spoke in pleading tone. Dryag pondered about it for a few minutes and said okay you may call me Didi. Thank you Didi Nissan. Issei's body began to shimmer what's happening to me. It seems that your body is beginning to wake. To wake up just close your eyes and picture yourself waking up. We won't be able to contact each other for the next week or so while well, your mind adjusts to my spirit awakening, although after that you will be able to talk to me through your left hand. I will also be able to speak to you through it and vice versa for me said Dryag. I'm okay weird. Dot talk to you later then said Issei before closing his eyes and waking up. The hospital. 
Ugh my head groaned to say as he sat up only to promptly tackled by his mother and pushed back down onto the bed. I say you're awake. His mother replied happily with tears flowing from their eyes. What happened I wasn't asleep for that long was I. Ask Issei tilting his head in confusion. We thought we nearly lost you Issei. The doctor said that you were in a mini coma from shock and your injuries and that it would be a while before you woke up. I'm so glad that you're okay my baby. His mom continued hugging him like a life refusing to let go. We stay by your side waiting for you to wake up. His father replied trying to choke back his tears but failing spectacularly. I'm so glad that you're alright. I'm sorry mom and dad for worrying you like this. Issei begins to tear up as well. His father comes in to hug him as well, his tears no longer restrained it's alright, all that matters is that you're safe. The parents continued their emotional reunion with their son, and Issei created two vows that he would stick to for rest of his days. The first was to never let my loved ones cry tears of sadness because of me, and the second was to become a man my parents are proud of. It was these two vows that would forever change the world of DXD. For good or for bad, well that's a story for another time. The doctor came and holding a clipboard came in and said to Issei and his parents. Well you guys are free to go. Really? Issei's parents exclaimed with happiness. Yes. Your son is in very good health. He has made a surprisingly quick recovery. It must be the power of youth. The doctor chuckled as he looked through his clipboard. Just avoid doing anything strenuous for the next week or so. Thank you Dr. Smith his parents thanked the doctor profusely. Think nothing of it. It's what we do. The doctor then left the room to leave the hiatus to their tender moment. Hi do household. Three weeks have passed since that incident and life has resumed as normal for the Hyadus. Well most of them. Issei was lying on his bed with his left hand raised over his face. Looking around to make sure nobody was watching he called out Dragon Booster. The familiar red gauntlet materialized onto his left hand. He brought it closer to his face and whispered Drag are you awake? I'm here replied Drag. Oh. Dot that's a relief Issei sighed, there's something I want to talk to you about. About what asked Drag. I want to learn more about dragons, I mean the most I know about dragons are from stories and want to hear it from a real dragon such as yourself. Well of course Drag SAID listen well and listen good Issei. Dragons are beings born from two different methods. One is by hatching from a dragon egg and the other is from large masses of energy. As such dragons are beings that represent power. As such they feared, admired, and respected by all. In fact some of the strongest beings in existence are dragons, such as myself. Bragg replied puffing with pride. So how did you end up sealed? Issei asked innocently. And just like that Drag's mood was ruined. Wah. Dryag broke into a loud sobbing. Drag. I'm sorry for making you cry Issei began apologizing profusely, trying to hide the sound of loud sobbing. Bragg eventually stopped her sobbing and replied in a deflated tone it's all because of Baka Albion. Baka Albion? Issei repeated in confusion before coming to realization, you mean the white one right? Yes. It's all her fault that I ended up like this Drake growled out, in anger. Do you want to talk about about? Issei asked gently, not wanting to set off Drake again. Okay. I'll tell you taking deep breaths, to calm herself she began to talk about Albion, her greatest rival, and annoyance. And that's how we ended up in the sacred gears boosted gear and divine dividing respectively. Drake finished her story, taking a deep breath. Issei was stunned at the story. Um. Dot dd, Nisan. I understand that you ended fighting a fierce battle with Albion. But do you remember what caused you to fight with Albion? Dd? Wah. Wow. Drake began sobbing once more I don't even remember why we were fighting, it's been so long since then. There, there Issei began patting his left hand in attempt to comfort Dryag it's okay. Maybe you don't have to fight with each other anymore. No one, more time. Roared Drake in defiance. Issei stared with a blank look on his face seriously. You don't even remember what caused you to fight. Isn't it taking it a bit too far? Bragg sighed, S-O-L-E-M-N-L-Y I mean. Dot I want to fight Albion one last time. Issei I need you help. As I am now, I am currently unable to fight. The title of Red Dragon falls to you. You need to become as strong as possible in order to win, no totally dominate all who will come for you. There will be many who will want on their side and they will resort to any means to make it so. There are even more who will want you dead to prevent you from intervening with their plans. You possess the potential along with the other Longinus wielders to make a great change in world, both in this world and the supernatural world. I ask of you. Will you fight? No. What? I'm not fighting alone. I got you by my side DD. Issei replied with resolve in his voice. There's nothing we can't do if we put our heads together. Bawadre blushed in surprise. So I guess a time to get stronger eh? Issei rolled off his bed and began to do push-ups. Let's begin. 
Four years have passed, and Issei has changed drastically. After leaving the hospital, life had resumed for the hiatus. Issei pleaded with his parents to learn martial arts classes. His parents' reactions were divided. His mom was skeptical, not wanting Issei to get into fights, while his dad was ecstatic and forward. It took a while, but his dad was able to convince his mom by saying it will allow him to make new friends. He took to it like a fish to water and began to attend martial arts classes in the town's dojo run by Jinpachi the two, a descendant of the Mishima family. Before he could officially learn the fighting style, he was forced to undergo an extremely vigorous training regime that made many lesser people quit out of its intensity. There were times when he thought of quitting, but he remembered why he was going through with this and so he preserved and his efforts paid off. Him along with two other students were able to endure the regime and gained a huge reward for their efforts. The regime was designed to push the body to its breaking point and unleash the power that hides within. Kai, the manifestation of one spirit. He managed to learn many of the signature moves of Mishima Karate style. He successfully impressed Jinpachi the two, enough that he was given a scroll that contained the advanced techniques of the Mishima fighting style. Issei never stopped practicing and learning. He began watching shows and movies that featured martial artists such as Yuri Boyka, Jet Li, Bruce Lee and more. He began to incorporate their fighting techniques into his fighting style. He didn't stop there and began watching videogames and TV shows, such as Drag So Bowl and wondered to himself, he possessed Kai and wondered if he could replicate those moves, and thus Issei's next saga begins. Forrest. An incredibly fit young boy of 13 years old could be seen standing a few feet from the boulder, his eyes closed in deep concentration, when all of a sudden his eyes shot open. Dot, he cupped his hands together and began to draw his Kai into his palms, making them glow red. He brought his cupped hands forward and yelled. H-A-D-O-K-E-N surge fist, a wave of blue energy surged out of his hand and made contact with the boulder. Haboom the boulder exploded, scattered into many fragments. Satisfied with his attack, he began to run through the katas of Mishima Karate given to him by Jinpachi Sensei, when he completed the katas, he brought his right hand up to his forehead to wipe away the sweat he had accumulated. He decided to sit down cross-legged to take a breather and slow his breathing. It was at this moment that Drag made herself known. Dragon Booster a familiar red gauntlet materialized on his left hand once more. Issei turned his head to the gauntlet hey dd. What's up? I've just thought of a way to advance your training even further. Really Issei was ecstatic at the news well how. We will be traveling by style though the dragon gate. The what? It's a method of transportation for mighty dragons such as myself. So where are we going dd? Issei asked. The underworld to meet with Tannen, one of my friends. Oh. Dot so is he a dragon too. That's right Issei, he's one of the strongest dragon kings, a rank below heavenly dragon, where me and Baka Albion reside. I'm going to need to borrow your left hand for a minute. Issei's left hand summoned a magic circle with Drake's symbol and the was floating in the air ready to be used. There we go. Drake relinquished her control over his left hand. All that's needed now is for you to use the boosted gear to empower the circle, and it will do the rest. Boost. 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 Issei thrust his hand forward transfer. The magic circle began to glow a bright red color and formed a red portal. Now let's go to the underworld Issei stepped into the portal and disappeared from the forest. Forest in the underworld. In the middle of a rocky plain a red portal appeared and young boy shot out with tremendous force. The boy ended up taking a tumble that got his clothes dirty. Issei brought his face to boosted gear. What the hell was that? Dot. It appears that you put in too much energy into the portal Dryag released a sigh. Issei turned his head upwards and gasped. The sky was purple, and there were trees that appeared to stretch for miles and miles ahead with no end in sight. Welcome to the underworld Issei. This is where the devils and the fallen angels dwell. So where's Tannen? I don't see a giant dragon anywhere. Shoot. It appears that we might have overshot our destination by several miles. Drake cursed an F-R-U-S-T-R-A-T-I-O-N it's been a while since I've last used it. It's alright DTSA placated Drake I've always wanted to explore this place. Drake released a S-I-G-H alright just make sure to not attract any attention to yourself. Relax DT what's the worst that could happen? No sooner did he say that, an explosion rang out a small distance away. Silence. I totally jinxed myself didn't I? Big time Drake deadpanned. Well let's find out what's going on, then Issei concentrated his kai to his legs and took a gravity-defying leap towards where the explosion had taken place. Several minutes before the explosion. I can't let them catch me. Those were the thoughts of a young girl with cat ears and trying to escape her pursuers. Looking to be 12 to 13 years old give or take, she had short white hair and amber cat-like eyes. 
She also a tail that was the same color of her hair, a fearful expression was etched upon her face. Run. 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 Was the mantra running through her head as she increased her pace, in a futile attempt to increase the distance she had from her pursuers. She sensed a buildup of demonic energy and tried to get away, but she was exhausted and couldn't avoid the attack completely. Baboom and the loud explosion of energy sent her slamming into a stone wall, and she cried out in pain. Did we get her? Asked a man asked the other man beside him, who also had bat-like wings protruding out of his back. You fool. Exclaimed the other man, slapping the other in the head for his stupidity what if you had killed her. We need her alive in order to face judgment. The two men flew to the ground and spotted the girl, sprawled up against the wall, gasping in pain. See. She's alive. That's all that matters. The first male replied callously. Just keep her from moving the other devil scoffed in disgust. All right all right the man raised his hands in mock surrender and took out a net and threw it on the girl. The girl frantically tried to escape the snare of the net to no avail. Quiet you filthy beast the devil snarled and pulled it releasing several volts of electricity into the net. The girl howled in pain as the electricity ran its course, paralyzing her body, cutting off any chance of her escaping. There were a million thoughts running through her mind. Anger and fear were the primary emotions running through her body at the moment. Anger at her powerlessness and fear for what they were going to do her. She began bawling, releasing tears of despair Nisama, 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 she repeated in a broken tone. The devil saw her crying and took out a rod to beat her with he said quiet. The man roared bringing down the road. The girl closed her eyes bracing herself for the pain, only it never came. She opened her eyes and gasped. There was a young boy standing in front of her grasping the rod with his right hand, like it was nothing at all. The boy raised his left hand that glowing a dangerous red at the devil's chest. But the those were the only words he could get out. Rouge H-A-D-O-K -E and red surge fist, the devil didn't stand a chance. The wave of red energy became a fist and slammed into the devil's abdomen. He was sent rocketing forward, crashing at the second devil and sending them both through several rocks, their bones broken and unconscious. It was only due to the fact that they were devils that they even survived the attack, albeit with severe injuries. The boy turned his head toward her and began to tear away at the rope until the young girl was free. The girl quickly tried to stand only for her body to fail her, and she stumbled. Dot the boy caught the girl before she could fall. He set her down gently to the ground. The boy said to himself, Dd, let's go home. I think there's been enough adventure for one day. Dragon Booster a red gauntlet materialized on his hand and began to draw a magic circle with a dragon symbol written on it. Boost, 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 boost. A female voice resounded from the gauntlet. The boy reached out to touch the magic circle transfer. The magic circle began to glow and form a red portal. The boy scooped the girl into his arms and they jumped into the portal, disappearing from the underworld completely. The red portal appeared in the middle of the forest and ejected the two children. Issei however was ready this time and managed to right himself in time to avoid tumbling this time, skidding a small distance away from the portal with the young girl in his arms. He set the girl gently on the ground who was shaking in his arms. Issei turned his head to the boosted gear. Dd you were definitely out of practice Issei scolded Drag. Well what did you expect? I haven't had to use it in years. Um excuse me? A shy voice interrupted their conversation. Issei turned his head to the girl. We'll talk later he dismissed the gauntlet and turned his gaze upon the girl. Said girl was fidgeting nervously. What was that? Oh. Sorry about that. What we just used was a dragon gate. I'm still working on getting the kinks out. Issei knelt down to the girl. Play, Stereo Dive Foundation Daisy. Why the girl trailed off, tears threatening to spill out. Why what? Issei repeated the question in confusion. Why did you save me? The girl moved closer to him, it had nothing to do with you. Do you need a reason to help people? Issei wrapped his arms around her, embracing her in a warm hug. Your eyes looked like they were calling for help. The girl hugged him even tighter and began to cry releasing her pent-up emotions. His shirt was stained by her tears, but he paid it no mind and continued to hold her close. At some point the girl had stopped crying, had just started sniffling in his shirt. Issei finally broke the silence when he asked, you want to talk about? She nodded her head well if you do, you are going to have come out of my shirt so we can talk. He gently told her as he started to pull her back. When he saw that his face was still tear-stained, he reached out and wiped away her tears with his sleeve. So what happened to you Issei asked the girl. Devils. She spat out with barely restrained hatred they took everything away from me. They took away the only family I have left, my big sister Kurokani. Me and my sister are Nekashu, an endangered species of cat yokai. Life was hard for use when our parents died. My sister ended up becoming a reincarnated devil in order to provide food and shelter for the two of us. 
There were times when Kuroka Ni came home covered in bruises and was coughing up blood from the experiments her master did to her. It was hell, but we endured it nonetheless. It was only when my sister exceeded her master's expectations that everything truly went to hell. Her master wanted to see if he could achieve the same results as me, and my sister killed him, so I wouldn't go through the same hell she did. The devils wanted to execute me publicly in order to make an example out of me. That's horrible, Issei gasped in shock at the depravity of devils. She began to tear up once more as she recalled the events that led to her manhunt. Issei quickly dispersed those negative thoughts by embracing her in a warm hug. Cute girls such as yourself should not have such a sad look on your face, Issei replied, not realizing the significance of his statement. The girl turned her face away from him to hide the red blush on her face. Oh, that's right. Issei clapped his hands together in realization I never got your name I'll go first. My name is Issei Haidu, but my friends call me Issei. What's yours? Issei asked. Mumble mumble the girl said. What? Shirin my name is Shirin the now identified girl spoke up even louder. Shirin ha Issei repeated the name, getting a feel for it. Issei turned his head to Shirin and smiled with his eyes closed. It's a really pretty name. The tender moment between them was interrupted by a loud noise. Growl. She looked up at him, blushing like a tomato. Issei gave a small smile and chuckled hungry. Issei turned his back to Shirin. That on my back Issei said, you're exhausted right now so I'll carry you. Shirin climbed onto his back wrapping her arms around his neck. When Issei was sure that Shirin was securely on his back, he linked his arms around her legs and stood up. Hey Shirin. Yes. Hand on tight. She gripped his clothes even tighter. He channeled his kai throughout his body enshrouding Shirin and himself. He took off at blistering speeds, and yet Shirin felt none of it due to his kai protecting her. Within five minutes, he arrived at his house's doorstep. He dispersed his kai, Shirin, releasing a mule of displeasure at the warm kai's disappearance. He stopped at the doorstep and turned to Shirin, who was snuggling his back we're here. My parents are unaware of the supernatural world and we need to come up with a cover story for my parents to believe. Here's the story. I found you all alone wandering on the streets. You lost your parents to an accident and were separated from your sister in the accident. You were attacked by unsavory men and I beat them up. She nodded her head. She cast a small illusion over herself, hiding her cat ears and tail. Are you sure that they'll like me? They'll love you. Issei sighed and entered to his house. Mom. I'm home. Issei welcome home, I hope that you haven't overworked yourself again, well anyways wash up dinners Issei's mom had walked around the corner to see her little boy carrying a cute white haired girl wearing tattered clothes. Ready. Issei. What happened? Issei's mom gasped in surprise. Mom, while I was heading home from training, I found this girl being harassed by unsavory men and they were dragging her to who knows where. When I saw what they were doing I knew that I couldn't stand there and do nothing, so I attacked the man and knocked him out from behind. I brought her here not knowing what else to said that she was homeless and had nowhere to call home. Issei explained. Greg's jaw dropped at how close to home his white lie was. It didn't hurt that when he arrived to where Shirin was, he ended up getting his clothes dirty, so it did look like that he had gotten into another fight. So I offered her a place to stay for now Issei stated truthfully. Mrs. Haidu was of two, no three minds at the moment. One was pride that he had for her son for defending this girl from those scary men, the other was fear that her son had gotten into a fight and could have been hurt or worse, and last and most prominent one was joy, joy that Issei had found such a cute girl to become friends with judging by the way he was holding her. Pride and joy had won over her fear and she went over see the girl Issei was carrying on his back. Asp Issei's mom gasped at the sight of the white-haired girl nuzzling Issei's back. We will have the cutest grandchildren to spoil those were the thoughts of Mrs. Haidu. You poor thing. Of course you stay for the night. I'll have to talk to my husband about any longer. Now Issei show your friend up to the shower so she can wash up for dinner, I'll go check to see if we have anything that will fit her. Issei's mom went back to the kitchen to cook dinner. When Issei's father had gotten home, his wife explained to him the situation. To put into simple terms, he was going through an almost identical thought process as his wife when he had seen Shirin. That's my boy. Were one of the thoughts running through his head as he saw Issei holding Shirin's hand. After dinner and getting his father's ecstatic approval for Shirin to stay as long as she wants, they said that there was room for one more in the Haidu family, she burst into tears of happiness and hugged them all tightly. Thank you. Thank you thank you. She cried out happily and refused to let go out of fear that it may have been a dream. Later that day. Night had fallen and it was time for everyone go to get some shut eye. His parents managed to find some old clothes and managed to get Shirin warm pajamas with cats all over it. She was given the guest bedroom right next to Issei's bedroom to sleep in. Issei was currently in his room meditating, conversing with Drag in his consciousness. Issei's subconscious. 
The underworld is currently off limits right now is say. Why? You ended up attacking those devils, they will surely report it to the higher ups, and will definitely be on the lookout for you and that girl. Don't call her that girl, she has a name you know. Alright you and Sheeran. There you happy now? Drake replied with a huff. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Issei arched his eyebrow. Greg released a tired SIGH sorry Issei it's just that I am worried about you. Remember what I told about dragons being representations of power. Yes. It's even more prominent when there's a heavenly dragon involved. You inevitably will end up attract many people, some allies some lovers, and many enemies. That Nekatama girl is just the start Issei you are going to have to step it up in the near future Issei. Issei gazed at the red dragon thank you for worrying about me DD, but do you remember what I told you before? Issei floated to Drake's snout and hugged it, we're in this together. We will dominate all who try to challenge us. Here's my promise to you TT. I will find a way to free you from this seal. What? You said that dragons are beings that live freely. I want you to be able live your life freely once more. I don't care how long it will take I will set you free, and you will be able to experience the world once more. I Drake was in shock of his promise. Yawn. Issei released a yawn and disengaged his hug on Drake. I have to go TT. I'll see you tomorrow. Issei closed his eyes once more and disappeared from the mental world. Drake was still in shock at his statement. The nerve of that boy Drake closed her eyes and began to dream once more. Issei's bedroom. When Issei opened his eyes, he found himself staring into amber eyes. Shirin quickly backed away in shock at him suddenly opening his eyes. Is there something you need Shirin? Issei asked politely to shy girl, who was looking down at the ground. Mumble mumble. Could you speak up please? Is it alright if I sleep in your bed with you? She asked shyly, her blush being hidden by the darkness. Why? Issei prompted. After losing our parents Kuroka and, and I would always sleep together to drive away the bad dreams. She said looking down at the floor again, I thought that you were asleep and I thought. You were wondering if you could sleep with me? She nodded meekly. Issei just chuckled a little and scooted over in his bed. Shirin visibly brightened and hopped into his bed knocking the breathe out of him as she landed on his chest with her head in the crook of his neck. She released the illusion she placed on herself letting her ears and tail be seen. She wrapped her tail around him as she snuggled with him releasing a small but cute smile. Issei blushed at the sudden display of possessiveness that Shirin showed as she hugged him even tighter. He enshrouded himself and Shirin with his kai once more as he too decided to go to sleep. His last thoughts before falling asleep with a smile on his face was I really want to protect that smile. That was when Issei first had a girl sleep with him and it was the best night of his life, so far. End of the year. So that's it for today's video guys, before you go just like the video and share it with your friends. Bye.